This is Pastor Jason Bratcher, and welcome to Hartford Baptist Church. We're glad that you've decided to join us today in our time of worship unto Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, through singing of praise, sharing our tithes and our offerings, and the reading and preaching of the God-breathed Word of God. We invite you to come to our facility at 415 Liberty Street, Hartford, Kentucky, next to the community center. Our traditional service starts at 9 a.m. Blessed Academy Sunday School at 10.15 a.m. And our contemporary service starts at 11.15 a.m. The Kingdom Kids Ministry or Children's Church as well as our nursery is provided in our 11.15 a.m. service. The registration table for those ministries is in our education wing and begins at 11 a.m. At Hartford Baptist Church, we're a community of grace, serving a community of needs. May God bless you through the services here today. Everybody's attention this morning. We're getting ready to get started, doing things a little different this morning. I know that's very surprising to you. This week, I don't know about you, but it's been a rough week. Today, we're going to, we're going to talk about attitudes. But this morning, I want us to get started by, by just cleansing ourselves just for a minute. Take our minds off of everything that's gone on this week. Get it completely out of our heads. I want you to put all of it behind you. Leave it all out on the steps this morning. Nothing to come inside the four walls except for you and your attention to Christ this morning. So I want us to just very solemnly just for a moment I want us to bow our heads close our eyes nobody looking around nothing to distract us this morning and this morning I want to ask if you would if there's things in your life you need prayer for if you want us to remember you if you would just raise your hand this morning thank you, thank you, thank you thank you Yes, hallelujah. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, as we come to you this morning, Lord, I pray that we can take just a few moments out of our day today. We can leave the world outside. Lord, I pray this morning that we just take your spirit and just engulf our hearts and our minds this morning to allow you to penetrate, to allow you to Take us to a place where you want us to be. Lord, I pray our attitudes be adjusted. I pray that this morning that we hold nothing back from you. We have a freedom in this place this morning, Lord, that your spirit would lead us and guide us to where we need to be, how we need to give to you, and how we need to give to one another. Lord, I pray your blessings in this place. And for those that rose their hand just a few moments ago, Lord, I pray for them individually. I pray your blessing down upon them, whatever they may have in their life that they seem to be going through, whatever it is they think may have them overwhelmed at this time, Lord, I pray your presence in that and they recognize it, Lord, and that that would be suppressed in their spirit and you be exalted. Lord, this morning as we worship you, let us freely give unto you our worship. Let us glorify you, Lord, as we do that through song, maybe through testimony, through witness, through preaching, through your word, whatever it may be this morning, Lord, I pray you give us a freedom to express that unto you. Nothing to hold us back, nothing to make us feel embarrassed, nothing to uh, hold us from the guy next to us hearing us, Lord, but I pray we give it to you. Lord, we love you, we praise you. And all God's people says, Amen. Amen. Would you stand with us as they lead us this morning in amazing grace? Amazing grace, how sweet the sound 
Rain. 
taking this moment to give God what he really deserves because you see all of those things are, are truly parts of worship the money that we give the, the prayers that we say the, the songs that we sing and, and, and you may think well I, I, I'm not a good singer I don't sing so well well did God not create you did God not create the very voice that you sing with to give him praise ever think that it's not good enough to tell our our God, our Savior, how much, how much we love Him. So let's take a moment just like this. Take a moment to tell Him how much we love Him.
clap of praise this morning. Amen? Amen. I love you, Lord. Amen. Amen. I don't know about you, but uh, rough week. Rough week. Uh, it's good to be in the house of the Lord with brothers and sisters in Christ, like-minded, to worship an Almighty God. Amen? Amen. Good to be here this morning. I hope you feel the same way. We're going to continue in our sermon series on our attitudes. And we're going to continue that with today's sermon, Play the Right Background Music. Now, when I say this in the introductory uh, sermon for this series, this has got nothing to do with the style of music you sing in worship. Got nothing to do with that. It ain't got anything to do with a drum set or a grand piano. It's got anything to do with that. Play the Right Background Music. You know, as I described this to you this morning, what I'm talking about is memories. We've all got a surround sound system that God has built into our minds. Who here has got a surround sound system at home, right? Yeah, I do. I got one in the living room. I got one in the bedroom. You know, it just engulfs everything. You know, it makes it so much better. God has built that surround sound in our mind. And I want to talk about that with you this morning for a few minutes. But we're going to go to the scriptures. Philippians chapter 4, verse 8. If you've got your Bibles, and I pray you do have your Bible with you this morning. I'm reading from the Christian Standard Bible. If you would, stand with us as we honor the reading of God's Word this morning. Philippians 4, 8. Finally, brothers and sisters... Whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any moral excellence and if there is anything praiseworthy, dwell on these things. I want you to say with me, dwell on these things. Ready? Dwell on these things. One more time. Dwell on these things. Thank you. Maybe have a seat. That's what I want us to do this morning is to dwell on these things. What things are we talking about? He says there in his scripture, he says, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, did it say anything on there is about whatever is heartbreaking? No. He says, but dwell on these things. Dwell on these things. Now back to that surround sound I was talking about. We've got in our minds. You know, I, I'm a, a 80s kid. 70s and 80s, 90s kid. And I love that old hard rock music. You know, well, I, what I would listen to, I remember, uh, some of you are not going to remember these, but cassettes. You know, that's the little tape in there, you know. And I'm even going to go back a little farther. Anybody remember the old vinyl records? Yeah, oh yeah, we got a few in here remembers those old vinyl records. But on those vinyl records, uh, if you look on, on them and you can see a little scratch on them, what would happen when you got to that? It'd skip, or it would keep going back and back and forth, right? It gets stuck in your head. That meant it had a flaw. There was something wrong with it. You know, uh, our internal music that we have is composed of thoughts, not that records and not the CDs and not the cassettes and all those things, but it, it's thoughts that's in our mind. And what, I'm what I want to get across to you this morning is we've got a built-in surround sound of those thoughts that are in our mind. God has built us that way. We have memories that are in our mind. Maybe that memory is something your mom or your dad said to you when you were little and you, you'll never forget that. Maybe it was a word of encouragement that came from a, a teacher, an elementary school teacher or a high school teacher or, or something of that manner that, that just really encouraged you and you've got that laws in your mind. And the one I use example this morning, maybe there's a memory you have when you're on that uh, playground and you're dividing up for basketball teams to play five on five and there's 11 guys there. And Four has been picked for each team. There's three left, and you're one of the three. And you're like, oh, I'm going to be the one left out. I'm going to be the one left out. But you get picked, and you're not left out. Maybe that's the memory you have. Or maybe you were the one that got left out. Maybe that's a memory that you hold on to. Whatever those memories are, whatever that you have playing over and over in your mind, 
Those memories are going to determine your attitude or determine your attitude. It's going to determine your character. It's going to determine your self-confidence, uh, your, your self-worth. And it's going to determine how you react in relationships. The way you communicate with others. Even maybe about your faith. All these things you have in your mind are all records. They're all music. Background music that is playing in your mind each and every day. Here's the good thing about it. Each and every one of us get to determine what those thoughts and memories are. We get to choose which ones we hold on to and which ones we don't hold on to. That's our choice. You see, you're the DJ. You're the DJ of that soundtrack of all these things in your mind. It's, it's you. You get to pick out, you get to determine the theme of what your CD is going to be like. You get to pick out the exact songs that are going to be played. And those things get played over in your mind every day, all day long, one after another. The problem is that some of us, I said us because I want to put myself in that too. Some of us make some real odd musical choices, don't we? Sometimes we choose some really odd stuff. A lot of them have deep scratches in the vinyl. You know, I started to tell you a while ago, I was an 80s kid. I had a, a, my favorite cassette. I don't know if Crystal remembers me playing it or not, but it was my favorite cassette. And I'm going to share with you what it was. I'm not real proud of it today, but it was Kiss. I was a Kiss fan, okay? Animal Eyes. And I don't know if you know those little cassette tapes, those that know what I'm talking about, when the, the tape would break in them every now and then, get caught in the recorder. Well, I don't know if you know the trick, but you could take Scott's tape and you could wrap it around it just so fine, and it would go ahead and keep playing. But when it would come to that Scott's tape, it would skip. You may skip a whole verse or something. You never know what you cut out of there, but it would skip, but it would keep playing, you know. And, and I had that in my car, and I'd play it, and it would skip. And people would get so aggravated because it would skip. Why don't you just buy another one? Because I like this one. But I chose my music, and I chose where to keep the scratches, and I chose to keep the imperfections, and I chose to, sh to all those mistakes. And you know what it did when people rode with me in my car, and they heard that? It would make them irritated. They would get upset with me. They didn't understand it, and they would laugh at me. You see, my choices of what I was going to listen to influenced my whole surrounding. It influenced everyone that was with me listening to that cassette. It get their attitude was influenced by my attitude. The same thing is with our subconscious mindset. Whatever we want to hold on to, we're going to affect everything and everybody around us but by the way we play it. You know, we can have scratches in our mental thoughts. Guess what? We're going to jump and it's going to irritate. You know, there's uh, some people are playing the same old songs all the time. Playing it all the time. You know, we, we never put new ideas or thoughts into our mind. We just want to hold on to what works for us, and we want to hold on to it. It's just like those old songs that we all know. You know, how about that song, It's My Party and I'll Cry If I Want To. Anybody know, remember that song? It's my party and I'll cry if I want to. How about, put your head on my shoulder. Put your head on my shoulder. How about, what kind of fool am I? These are the kind of songs that we hold on to. That's what we hold on to. It's my party and I'll cry if I want to. Pole, pole, pitiful me. Boo hoo. Do you not think that reflects to everybody around you? Does you all think that something like that is an attitude people pick up on? A characteristic of yourself that people pick up on? How about what kind of fool am I? Well, a lot of people see that in me. But we hold on to these things and we keep playing them over and over and over. But what I want to ask you this morning, what's the soundtrack going on in your mind today? What, what, what's that soundtrack? What are the things you got going on in your life? Think about it. And I want you to think about it. I don't want you to think about it for just this moment. That's something I want you to take with you when you leave here today. What is my thinking about? What is it that's set in my mind that's influencing my character? What is it that's influencing my, my contribution to society? What is it that I'm holding on to that maybe I need to get rid of? What do I need to change? And let me give you an example of what I'm talking about. I love to watch movies. And who's seen the movie Jaws? Who's seen Jaws? All right, yeah, yeah. 
All right, now, now I want you to just imagine the climax of Jaws 1 at the very end if there's no music. What is it? It's a rubber fish bouncing on a boat that's sinking. Ain't nothing scary about that, is it? Really isn't. You know, it's nothing bad. But now you put the music to that and that orchestra playing and that, and that crescendo up in the music and everything. What, when that rubber fish bounces up on that boat, every kid in the place goes under the chair, don't they? Because it scares them to death. There's people today that won't even take a shower because they're afraid to get in the water because they've seen the end of Jaws. And it's got nothing to do with the fish or the boat, but it's the music. What I'm getting at is, today you've got influence on people in your life. You've got influence on those all around you. And it's got nothing to do with your flesh and bones. It's got to do with your attitude. And it's got to do with your character. I can stand right in front of you and it doesn't make a bit of difference. But if I'm passionate about something, if my attitude is overwhelmed with it, I can make a difference and an impression in your life about it. And it all comes from the soundtrack that plays in my mind. There's still people today, as I said, won't even take a bath because of Jaws. What is it today, because of your attitude, because of your character, because of what you do, that they've been affected? First point I want to make today about this topic is, does your memories give you courage or do they steal it? Do your memories give you courage or do they steal it? Because, you know, we talk about Christians, we got to be good stewards. And we talk about being stewards, we, we, most of the time we want to talk about our finances and old Dave Ramsey and telling us how to take care of our money. That's what we want to talk about when we talk about being stewards. But we're to be stewards of finances, we're stewards of our time. But let me tell you, we are stewards of our mind. We're stewards of our mind. The memories you keep will either give you courage or it's going to steal what courage you have away. It's going to do one of the two things. One of those two. Your memories will either help you build your faith or it's going to plague you with doubts about your faith. Think about that for a minute. I mean, that really will hit home. You're either going to, it's going to help you with your faith or it's going to make you doubt your faith. Those memories... So I got a question for you. Has anybody injured you in the past? You know, and as I said that in the first service this morning, really, have you been injured in a car accident? That's what it sounded like to me when I said it this morning. You know, those commercials with those lawyers. Have you been injured? What I'm at, have you been injured? Has people hurt you verbally? Has people hurt you in your attitudes and in your character? Now you can either file that hurt in an album or you can disregard it. You can open up the drawer, put it in the file for hurt, keep a hold of it for later, or you can take it and put it in the shredder and get rid of it. That's your choice. That's our choice. But if you choose to retain it, if you choose to rehearse that event over and over and over in your mind, let me tell you, it's going to have a negative effect on your attitude on your character and your witness. Every time you come into contact with that person that hurts you, you'll notice that there's distance that keeps growing between you. Nothing's being resolved. Nothing's being put back together. Attempts at conversation, they prove shallow. I mean, at best, they're shallow. You know, your memories, they have now stolen your courage to resolve the problem or to interact. Your memories. Your memories. But on the other hand, when we store pictures of wonderful moments, wonderful moments. It's like, go back to just a minute ago when I was talking about getting picked on the playground for a basketball game. What I choose to remember is the day that I was picked, not the day that I didn't, because I didn't. You know, and I, I mentioned this in the first service that I wasn't aiming to, but I did, and I'm going to mention it again. I, I don't remember much about my childhood when I was little. I, I choose, I've chosen not to. Not because I was beaten or thrashed or anything like that. It's because I was a little fat kid. But end of all jokes, all those things. And I, and I remember being that, but I've decided that I'm not resting in that. 
I'm not holding on to that. I'm going on. I'm going on. The memories I have of being a, a smaller kid is when I was in the sixth grade, my basketball team won the county-wide basketball tournament. That's, that's a good one for me. That's a good one for me. I remember in junior high, the, my basketball team, we was all county in one school, and we had three different teams from depending on which part of the county you was from, and we won that year. I remember those things. I choose to remember the positive things. I get together with my buddies and we sit and we talk and they, or my mom's and dad's friends and sit down and talk to them. You remember when this happened? You remember? Don't. I choose not to. I'm not saying I'm saying I'm going to say I got it all figured out because I can remember things bad too. But we've got to choose to keep it positive. And when, when I'm talking about that, I want to go back. Last week I talked about David and Goliath. I want to go back into David and Goliath for just a minute because I want to show you something about David. See, David looked up at Goliath physically, looked up at Goliath, and he saw this towering man over the whole armies of, of Israel. But he drew courage from the memories that God, from what God had done for him in his past. 1 Samuel chapter 17 verses 36 and 37 says this. Your servant has killed lions and bears. This uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them. For he, was defied, he has defied the armies of the living God. Then David said, The Lord who rescued me from the paw of the lion and the paw of the bear will rescue me from the hand of this Philistine. So said or Saul said to David, go and may the Lord be with you. You see, what we see here is David had remembered in his mind, not that he was attacked by a lion, not that he had to beat off a bear, but that God delivered him from both of those. He remembered the positive aspects. I don't know about you, but fighting with a lion to me is going to be scary going to be hard to get over the, the fright of that. But David had beaten that and said, I'm looking at it in a positive light. God has taken care of me. So in his mind, he is our, here's the thing, when David went up to Goliath, before he ever picked up the stones, before he ever walked out onto that field, he had already seen the victory. Man, that's powerful. The things that are going on with you in your life, the, the things that you're troubled with right now, can you already see the victory in it? Or has it got you beaten? Because I can tell you right now, I can watch you in the midst of a situation, you can watch me in the midst of a situation, and you can tell whether I see victory in it or whether I see defeat. Just by the way I present myself to you. My attitude. I can tell if you're defeated, you can tell if I'm defeated. I can tell if you've already got victory in it. Just by our attitude. David, I can almost see that. It's, it's almost comical to me in my eyes to see David walk up to Goliath. Because I see, y'all watch the Jeffersons, George Jefferson? Oh yeah, that's why I see him walking up there. Like, man, I'm cool. I got it. It's over. It's done. And, you know, he, he didn't walk up. No, man, don't hit me. He walked up and encouraged he already had the victory. Church, that's what we have got to have. David pulled from his mental photo album, from his surround sound. He pulled out his courage, and his courage was based on his experiences and his memories of being victorious through God. He pulled that out. He hadn't shredded it. He hadn't held on to the file that said, the Lord let me get attacked by a bear. The Lord let me get attacked by a lion. That ain't the way he filed it. He filed it as the Lord made me victorious. He gave me strength. And from that, he found the strength to be victorious. We have to steward our memories. And we talked about finances, talk about all these different things we've got to be stewards of. We've got to steward our memories. What are you remembering today? What are you remembering today? What is it that's driving you? 
Are you a good steward of what you are remembering? Are you putting all the worst pictures into your album and disregarding the best? Are you, have your, have all your records got scratches on them? Or are you got the best shiny new CDs, the iPods? Well, what do you got? What, what, should, what memories have you got? Too many of us remember what we should be forgetting. And too many of us are forgetting what we should be remembering. I want you to get that deep down in your soul. I want to say it again. Too many of us are remembering what we should be forgetting. And we're forgetting what we should be remembering. We're forgetting the cost of grace. We're forgetting the blood that was shed for my salvation. We're remembering that they ain't doing it the way I like them to do it. We're remembering that if I do it like that, people might laugh at me again. We're remembering that that doesn't make me feel that comfortable. But we're forgetting is that there is victory in Jesus Christ. That's what David remembered. So the challenge. I want to challenge you. It's not spring yet. But I want to challenge you to do some early clean, uh, spring cleaning. Do a little early uh, spring cleaning. Go through all your memories that you've been keeping. Everything you've got logged and filed in your... And I want you to go through every one of them individually. Because here's the thing. There are some bad memories that are good. That are good. I used an example this morning. Me and, my, me and Crystal and my family, we were in Bullock County in ministry. Let me tell you, worst time of ministry in my life. It was awful. Awful. And I guarantee you I can remember every moment of it. And I'm going to make myself remember every moment of it because I've never grown in ministry more than I did while I was there. Horrible memories. But I don't need to forget it because it grew me closer to Christ. So as you go through the little bit of a spring cleaning in your mind, don't throw it out because it wasn't good. Throw it out because you didn't glean anything from it. We all go through some bad stuff. But that doesn't mean that it's all bad. Maybe we glean something from it. Go through those CDs. Go through those. Get the scratches out of the way. Evaluate them one by one. And as you evaluate those, I'm going to challenge you. Bury the hatchet. Bury the hatchet. Do you need to extend forgiveness? Well, if you need to extend forgiveness somewhere to something or someone in your life, get to it, get it done, get rid of the bad memories. Because let me tell you, somebody may have done you wrong. Somebody may just very well beat you down physically, beat you down mentally, emotionally, whatever the case may be. Maybe they've done you wrong, but let me tell you what, you holding on to it is doing yourself wrong. Forgive them. Forgive them. Maybe not for them, but for you. Forgive them. Forgive them. Get rid of it. Second thing is, is I want you to think about this. Fleeting thoughts. John Wesley wrote this. He said, I can't stop a bird from flying over my head, but I sure can stop him from making a nest in my hair. Boy, there's a whole lot of depth to that. It doesn't sound like much, but think about it. I can't stop what people say to me I can't stop what people do to me, but what I can control is allowing it to rest and harbor in me when they do it. That I have control over. I can't have any control over what any one of you all are sitting there thinking about me right now. What you may want to say to me after church is over today. There's not a thing in the world I can do about that. But what I can do is not rest in whatever it is, whether it's negative or positive. Not rest in it. We've got to make up our minds to be that. You know, 
what John Wesley here is even talking about when we talk about this mind and all these things is just because a thought passes through our mind, you know, we get thoughts time to time. We don't necessarily need to let those negative thoughts take up residence in our mind. We, we're going to get those bad thoughts. We're going to just don't give them any audience. Don't, don't hold on to them. Don't harbor them. We got little control over sometimes how we feel and how, how we, what we think about certain things. You know, I know me, I, I used to be horrible about just reacting. So we can't, how things affect us and how things hit us, sometimes we don't really have a lot of control over, but how we resolve it is our decision. What comes by us is our decision. God requires each and every one of us to judge and evaluate our thoughts and to evaluate our intentions. If they're not sound or if our, if our thoughts are, are not biblical, then we got to bring them into submission to God's Word. If there's something going on in your life and, and you don't know what's going on, you can't, you can't get it right, take it to God's Word and find out. That should be our judge. We got to decide, as I said before, to steward our thoughts. Because when our, we th steward our thoughts, our thoughts go to our heart. And whatever is in our heart is what we react, say, and do. You know, uh, something I want you to think about, Ephesians chapter 6, verses 14 through 17, talks about the armor of God. And it talks about, uh, I think it's six different pieces of Roman soldiers' armor. And, and in that, it's the truth that us Christians can apply that to each and every piece of that armor. But I want to focus on one piece of that armor for just a minute, and that's the helmet of salvation. The soldier's main piece of protection is the helmet. The Roman soldier's helmet was made out of bronze. That means it was imperable. imperable. It couldn't be uh, punctured. But the, the awesome thing about the helmet was it wasn't just to cover the head. It had a, a, a sack, a ring, whatever you wanted, chains that flowed around the neck. It, all, it protected the head and it protected the neck. Now, what's so important about that is, is that in hand-to-hand -hand combat, the biggest thing was, is if you could decapitate them, it was over. It was done. It was done. So this helmet not only protected the head, it, 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 it protected the neck so that you couldn't be decapitated. So why do we need the helmet of salvation? Well, if our adversary, you know who I'm talking about, Satan, if our adversary who wants our souls, if he can find a Christian with an unprotected thought life, he's an easy mark. If we're not protecting our thoughts and what we're doing, we are an easy mark. Satan is a head hunter. He's a head hunter. Our minds are a battlefield. Our minds are, I said this in an earlier service, I'll say it again. Satan can't read your mind. But boy, he can sure plant the thoughts in it. He can plant the thoughts in it. You know, uh, something that my mentor said to me a long time ago, and I've taken it to heart, and I want to pass it on to you, those that I've never, haven't said it to yet. But Satan doesn't know what's in our mind. The only way he knows how to get to us and what's on our mind is if we voice it. And say it. You know, those things like, boy, that really gets my goat. Oh, say, who? I don't know how to get to him now or her. If that happened to me, I don't know what I would ever do. Oh, Satan writes that down. Well, when I need him, I know what to do. I know how to get there. So we got to protect ourselves. Guard your thought life. Steward all that goes on in your mind. And we do that with the helmet of salvation. Guarding what's in our mind. And when we can guard what's in our mind, we can stand our ground against Satan. Third point is, what's in your heart? What's in your heart? Proverbs 4.23 says, Watch over your heart with all diligence, for from it flows the spring of life. What, what, what's he saying? He's saying that whatever's in your heart is what's going to be shown. What do you love? What do you feel? How do you want to react? From your heart, it's going to show. Our heart is what affects all of life. And it'll affect it either positively or it'll affect it negatively. 
when we understand this power of our hearts, we can become the drivers of the, that vehicle and easier to operate it. You know, my pickup truck. Once I learn how to steer, I can handle the truck a lot better. Once I learned how to use the accelerator and the brake, I could handle that vehicle a lot better. When I learned what all those little letters were on the gear shift, I could handle the vehicle so much better. But even though I learned all those things, if I get in my pickup truck and the motor is not in it, I can put it in D and I can push the gas pedal and I can act like I'm steering and I'm not going anywhere. The only thing I can do is like a little kid and imagine it. And imagine it. Right? Well, let me tell you. In our heart, there's a gas pedal, there's a brake, there's a steering wheel, there's a gear shift. All those things that we can put in there to figure out how to handle it. But let me tell you what. If Jesus Christ is not in the middle of all those different pieces, guess what? You're going to sit there and you're not going to go anywhere. You may have all the tools, but if you don't have Jesus Christ in your heart to show that, Matthew 12, 34, 35 says, Broad of vipers, how can you speak good things when you are evil? For the mouth speaks from an overflow of the heart. A good person produces good things from a storeroom of good, and an evil per person produces evil things from a storeroom of evil. What makes a heart healthy is what we feed it. You know, I made a, this morning, I was talking about Bryce and Hannah. We've got a grand dog now. We don't have any grandchildren. We got a grand dog. Great Dane, little puppy, Remy, awesome. But they're careful what they feed him. Because when that great Dane gets big, he's a finicky animal. And if he didn't raised up right and taken care of, he could be have all these illnesses. So they're finicky about what they feed him. And they're going to make him a great, great animal by what they feed him. What the the medications they give him, all those things. The heart's the same way. Whatever you put into the heart is exactly what's going to come out of the heart. If we put these evil thoughts, if we put these uh, negative thoughts in our mind and on this soundtrack of life, if we put that there, guess what? That's what's going to come out of our heart. So let's go back to Philippians 4, 8 that we started with this morning in Scripture. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any more moral excellence, and if there is anything praiseworthy, dwell on these things. Say it with me. Dwell on these things. One more time. Dwell on these things. It doesn't say anything there about heartache. It doesn't say anything there about evil or negative things. It's all true, honorable, just, commendable. The thoughts of our minds are important because they form the treasures that eventually make its way to our heart. What we have in our mind, the filing cabinet, as I, I give you the visual, what we have filed in there eventually makes its way to our heart, and that's what everybody sees. So if our treasure is good, we're going to be good. If treasure is evil, we're going to be evil. If you allow fearful thoughts in your heart, you're going to develop fearfulness. You can have a hardened heart, you can have a calloused heart. You can have a shallow heart or you can have a broken heart. It all depends on what you allow into your heart. The phrases that I talked about a while ago. Boy, that really gets my goat. This happens to me, I don't know what, what I would do. These are phrases that indicate that whatever was seen at that time or whatever was heard or allowed is now allowed into their heart. Whatever it was, it's now in their heart. Right in the middle of their affections, right in the middle of everything about their character. It's now in there. And because we've allowed those things, those perspectives into our life, guess what? Everything is altered. 
So I challenge you today. Play the right background music. In your surround sound, she comes and they come to lead us this morning. Play the right background music. What is it that you need to do a little spring cleaning and get rid of? What is it? I'm going to close this morning by, by telling a story. I'm going to tell you a story that I read this week. I thought it was really good. It's about a man. He was going to, going to a local jail. And he was going to minister there in the chapel. He was going to speak to the men there in, in that jail, in that chapel. So he walks up to this jail and, and he notices this jail is a state-of-the-art facility. I mean, it's technically everything. So he walks up to the front door. There is nobody around. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, a voice shouts out to him, Give me some ID. So he pulls out his wallet, gets his ID out, and he holds it up to that camera right there. The guy on the other end looks at it through the camera. And he says, Okay, what's your business here? What do you need? He said, I'm here to speak in the chapel to the men today. He said, Okay. Bzzz, door opens. Come on in. So he walks in. He said, just go on to the chapel. So he starts walking down the hallway and he realizes, I have no idea where I'm going. So he goes back and he gets the guy's attention on the camera. He says, I don't know how to get to the chapel. He says, just start walking. And as you get to the right door that you need to go through, I'll just open the door from here and you just follow. Okay. So he starts walking down the hall and he's passing door and door and door and door. All of a sudden the door opens. He just walks in it. Another hallway, he starts walking, passing door and door and door. Another door opens, he walks through it. Another hallway. So he walks, gets to another door. The third door opens up, he walks in it. When he walks in, there's an elevator right in front of him. Elevator door opens and he steps inside. Wants to push the button, there's no buttons anywhere. Door closes and the elevator starts moving. Goes up, door opens, it's the chapel. He walks into the chapel. He's greeted. Everybody welcomes him. He speaks. And after he gets done speaking, he looks at the guards that is standing there and he says, he said, could I meet that guy that I was talking to? All I did was hear his voice. Can I go to the control room and see all that? He, and the guard said, yeah, sure. So he takes him to the control room. He opens the door and there are buttons and switches and monitors all over the place. Everywhere he looked, all this technology... Look like he began to think all it would take was for somebody, one of these inmates, to get loose and get in here and just be complete havoc on this whole facility. Pushing and pulling, opening doors that didn't need to be opened, deciding where people were going to go instead of where they needed to be. Guys, the heart is like a control room. You know, for years, we've pushed levers. We've made all the decisions uh, the way I thought it should be, the way you thought it should be. We've tried to handle our life our own way, and then maybe even at times we've tried to handle our life the way the world says we should do it. I don't know about you, but at one time in my life, I realized how adversively affected my life was how, how bad my attitude was and just like the prodigal son I finally came to my senses I opened the door of my heart to Jesus Christ opened my the, that door because this man's walking through this prison somebody's opening doors for him and he's blindly following Till he gets to that control room and he realizes, I've got to decide. There comes a time when we have to decide. Because only then can we begin to clean house. Only then can we begin to change everything about ourselves. So this morning... It's the challenge to you. Play the right background music. Maybe your background music this morning starts with a compilation called Salvation. 
Maybe you need that salvation, that helmet of salvation to place upon your head so that Christ can help protect your mind. Maybe that's where you need to start this morning. Maybe there's junk, junk in your life. There's files in your file, mental filing cabinet that need to be picked up and put through the shredder. Bring them to God. Oh, if you want to bring them to me, I'll be glad to talk with you about them, pray about it, but I'm going to tell you, giving them to God. Shred them. Shred them. Would you give it to him this morning as we stand and as we worship, this altar is open. The invitation's there for you this morning.365 days a year. It's not just Easter. It's because He lives. Because He lives. I can face the junk of tomorrow because I choose Jesus Christ. I want to ask Him to sing another verse and I want you to worship. Because He lives. Not because it's Sunday. Not because it's church time, but because He lives. 
Would you worship with us this morning? Again, we're located at 415 Liberty Street, Hartford, Kentucky. Services at 9 a.m. traditional, 1115 contemporary, with Blessed Academy at 1015. Nursery and Kingdom Kids available at 1115. If you would like to know more about our church, give us a call at 270-298-3701. Our office hours start Monday through Thursday at 9.30 a.m. Like us on Facebook or go to our website. Have a blessed day.